at this next work here of the uh, young girl at a Hindu wedding, rather attractive, I'm going to be using this test set of SAA pastels. Uh, I haven't got all the colours I require here. I don't, for instance, have the uh, turquoise or this bright red. And I don't want to use other pastels because I only want to use these in this particular um, session. So what I'm going to have to do is use some red acrylic ink for the reds and put it on beforehand and also some turquoise uh, acrylic ink and do a base of that underneath as well as an experiment to show you how we can work the pastels with water over the top of watercolour paper and the inks. So it's quite a useful technique of mixed media here just to see what these pastels can do with water. So we're going to be using these pastels with water and when they're dried they're fixed with water so then over the top of that as well as normal. This is a hot press paper. You can always tell which side of the paper you should be using with a, a decent watercolour paper, a full sheet, because the corners will be marked each side with either the watermark of their name or their um, logo, which I'll show you here. Now you see the logo. Uh, you, you see it by holding it up to the light. Now a hot press paper is a smooth paper, this is £140, ideal for doing detailed work like this portrait. If I wanted to do a slow scene in mixed media then I might be using a rough or a knot paper. And it takes the pastel perfectly well. Um, what you also notice here is this very strange set of dots and lines and designs. Because at the same time in demonstrating this pastel I'm going to show you another way of working. Only this time it's a new way of doing scaling up. Now I think actually that the easier way is just to measure by hand and use a uh, grid reference, but this way is possibly a little bit more accurate in that you can go right down to a vector point, and it's called a vector system. I went to a demonstration very recently and saw an artist called Malcolm Hammond who developed this, and I thought it was a rather fine way to show you because I haven't actually seen it done anywhere else. As I say, for me the grid system is simpler and I will carry on using that, but if I wanted to do a larger scene for instance, and I wanted to be exact as where things were going, then this vector system is very useful, if a bit complicated for you. But I'll do my best to explain it here so that you understand it, and you may find a use for it in the future. I had quite fun getting used to it, I must admit. So let's move ahead on this and explain uh, just what we're going to be doing. So we've got the landscape set of pastels to try out on a portrait here. And we're going to start off with these acrylic inks. I'm going to start off by actually doing the turquoise here and the um, right way through here so I can add the pastels over it and the reds in acrylic ink with a little bit of a wash as well and then I'm going to work up the, um, the pastels over that. What I want to do here is show you this vector method of drawing. In other words, we shall use a single point here, um, almost like perspective, from the centre of her nose here in fact, which is about the centre of her face, isn't it, um, to work outwards to enlarge this picture onto this large piece of uh, hot press paper. What I'm going to do first of all is just find the, the, the very basic and most important salient points. In other words, it's basically we're going to trace, but what we want to know is where the major points come, the salient points come, so that we can get those in the right positions when it's scaled up. Right, just about to finish the basic tracing now. You know where things are here. So we should be able to work these vector points out from this now. What I'm going to do now is make that the centre point and find all of these um, additional salient points as to where things come, like these. And we'll make a line from those centre point of the nose out through there to get the angles the radius if you like. And so on. Right out to the outside ones as well. We'll use these two points at the same time. All of these most important measurements Start to explain how it's going to work. So in other words, we're going to expand this out onto the paper here by using these same angles and just scaling up from those angles. So once we have the uh, tracing done, <coughs> we can start to draw out these radius from here. 
more the central point so that we can <coughs> get the basic proportion of the outside shape. I don't want it too tight, too heavy, because I say we're going to we pass all over this, but even so we don't want it showing through. And we can work that out again now from the centre. You need to put chalk on the back of these marks now. Put the blue chalk onto the back of the uh, tracing. And we would come back onto here. And we can now line that up with those existing marks ready to go again. So we know it's going to fit in there. And the first thing I want to do is make that centre mark. I don't do all these interior ones yet. Make the centre mark with the nose, just on here. And then all these other lines are going to come out from that in a moment. And I need to do all the outside ones, but we know where they're going anyway, because they're going to be joining up to that centre mark on the nose. But we need to know just where they are here, to be able to join these angles up. And that will give us the basic shape that the head's going to fit within. Check on that, there's all our blue marks. And then I take my ruler and we'll just lightly go around these points in a moment. All of those points should be on the mark to the centre mark, which is here. Yeah, just there. So all of those marks are going to there. I can do that now. Variations on this, but this is the main point is that we get the center point to measure from on the face or on whatever you're doing. It could be a landscape, it could be almost anything. And then once we've got these radii coming out, you can see where they're going to come down here. So for instance, I've got my radii there, and now I've got to go across those two, and between these two, and those two, and we're going to bring that line out in scale along the radii. There. Equally, we can do it this way, and we could have drawn it freehand and just measured to scale one part to another. More freehand. Right, that's what this figure's fitting within. This is the shape of this girl within here, within that scale. So there is that angle, there is that angle, up to her shoulder here, the hair. This is the back of the flowers here, in fact. And we've got these other angles marked in a moment. Right, now I've got that, I can go back in and I can put on the other blue points mark those on in a minute so I know where everything is going in on the interior lines next. Now I've got to start marking in these ones because this is where we know the eyes and the nose and all these salient points are going to be coming. So I've got them all, seems to be there. Let's do that now then and we'll start extending out the outside marks. Right, I want this to fit within here, so the widest I can go is to there. Let me move that one to there, that one's going to go to there, so it's about right. We're a little bit inside, I'll take that one to there. Right, you can see we've now expanded this composition out to this, so that's the size it's going to fit into. We couldn't have got much bigger than that, we need to have a little bit more anyway, so it doesn't matter about this bit, I can cut that down a bit. So it's just expanded it that little bit. Now we're ready to start bringing out the actual uh, shapes and drawings of, of the uh, proportions of the interior of this. And to do that, the same angle, this one, and we bring that angle out until the rule reaches here. And it's just fitting within now. Look.
we start taking angles from these marks here. So for instance, these, these are now the vectors. We say, right, um, we draw a line through We've got a line from the centre through any of these particular vectors out like this. So we need them through these now as well. It gets a bit complicated with all these lines, dots and dashes. So that's the line for the edge of the eye, where the eye starts on both sides. Uh, now we want to have a line through to here that we can vector to both of these marks. I'll just put one through there anyway and all I have to do now is take the angle of the eye to that vector joint here so that one to there and if I correspond that up to here like that so I, I take this one from here this is this line between there and there and it now comes up to this joint here then that is where it's going to come when it's enlarged so that point there is now that one and this one here if I bring that up the same way to here that is where it's going to come there if I bring that line if I do this line here there's the line to it there and I bring that up so the corresponding part of that one is there the corresponding part of this one if I take that one now to there and I follow that one up to the same position here it's like this then where it joins here is where that I is going to come. So that's where my eye is going to come when it's made larger there. And over here we're going to it gives us the eyes enlarged from that size up to this size on the correct vectors here. So it takes a little bit of thinking out but you can see now how it can work. Let's now go down to the nose here. And this is how the nose is working, like this here. The nostril comes up and around there. The end of that nose comes up. The nostril is here and the end of the nose is there. So we now need to enlarge the nose out. So let's see how we're going to do that. We've already got a line coming out here, so that's good for our vector. We can mark from the edge of the nose to this joint here. So from that point to this point, which will correspond to that point in a moment. There we are, a nice light line. Now I take that same line, and we know it's got to be just below here, so if I now take that and take up my ruler so that it reaches here, that gives me that, so that's where the edge of that nose should be coming, along that line there, so that's how much wider it's going to be, and this one the same, if we take that one now out to a vector point back again so it bounces down to here and it bounces back up from there to here that's the width of the nose there it's going to come on that line again so we're just expanding it out a bit it hasn't actually dropped down yet because the eyes have gone up what the line of the mouth next so we're looking at this line here, and those two spots for the original mouth are here and here. Those two. We have to take those down from here. Let's go from the centre point first, which is this one, to the mouth. Centre point to the mouth, to a point here. So there's the mouth, there's the centre point, here's the mouth, out to the centre point. Same this side, we'll go from the centre point which is here and in fact the edge of the mouth is just on that line there so it's not too bad. So for the edge of the mouth here on the vector we should be able to go from that mark there up to here 
and then if I take that out to the same position, the ruler, to the edge of this mark here, then where that meets there should be where that mouth comes. So from here to here, if I now take the angle down, ruler straight, until it reaches there, then that should be where the mouth comes there. So that would then give us the angle of the mouth here like this. So if I now take this angle across here, there's the centre. I put my ruler from that joint there to the edge of the nose and I bring that back out down to this joint here. Then that's where my nose is going to come. So there to there. Now, you should even be able to get the thickness of the lower lip. I've got a little mark here. That's where the mouth was coming. I think the lower lip now on scale is going to be about that thick. But you can see how the whole thing is now coming into proportion. Let's see. We want the chin next, and the chin was this mark here. So we want to know exactly where that chin comes. Now this lower lip, put our line across here and the vector from this edge of the smaller area to the bottom of the chin, bring the rule out to the same position on here and if we follow down from there to there we should end up with just here and that's where our chin is supposed to be coming which is about twice this width here. So if I were to take, to just test it, if I were to take this measurement here, it's about the same to here. So that measurement there, it's about the same to there. So I'm about right there. And that's going to give me a mouth to a chin. You start to see her appearing now. We just expand out a bit now as we get the head done. Now, these two marks here are these two here, so we need to find where the bit of hair comes. In fact, I can tell just by this that if I come up almost straight up from the nose there at a slight angle, I'm going to be somewhere around here. I suspect our next mark is going to be about there, but we want to find that one now, which is this one, where it's actually coming. We now, at this point um, that we want here, to be up here for the hair. So that's this point for the, the scent for the uh, top of this hair area here, which actually is marked um, here on ours. If I take that vector from this point here to there, and then I expand it from here out to there with the rule, I end up here which would be about right for that, and that's going to give me the top of that bit of curve, which then comes around into curves like that. Now let's look for the centre of the hair here, the lower part, which is going to be this one here. For that in this case is going to be, I'm going to be using this line again here. And we start here and put it on the mark we want, so that corner there to there. That's going to cross the joint that is here. If I bring it up then from there to bring to the outside, it's going to cross it just here. So that should give us where this curve comes here. So the hair comes up and in and round. Where the hairline comes there. Our next point of reference is over here, and that one is going to be this one here. You can see like that. So that one wants to be up here somewhere. No idea. This hasn't got a segment out at the minute, so I've got to go to the centre of my nose picture to that mark and just make segment out. 
now I can come back to my mark here and line those two up Then all I've got to do is bring the rule out to there and where that meets here is where that mark should be here so now I know that that bit of hair is coming down round like that that's where these red flowers are just here so we're losing these blue marks. These blue marks are a bit annoying at the moment because they're getting in the way, but we don't need them anymore. Um, that's that now. Here, um, so we now know that hair's coming down here, curled in and around there, comes in here, out. It's a straight bit here. That's where it comes in again. all the way down to there. You can approximate this, you see, approximate this. You can start looking at proportions now compared to this easily. So straight across from here comes in, so straight across from here comes in there, comes out around to the eye there. So we don't have to use these marks for every single thing to get everything exactly right. We can, we can be near enough on it. We need to know where these two marks are coming on the throat. And that's going to be these two here. Now we need to find this area of the neck. So that's this spot across. So if I line this ruler up first of all with my junction there and that dot. So here the junction on the inside the smaller one of the silhouette, the dot here, bring the rules down until they reach here and if I follow that line down here that should be where the neck comes. So we know on the drawing it comes up fairly straight so it's almost straight up like that. So you see where her neck comes. Now, now that that comes out there, the next one in, that's this one, is where the hair is coming round, coming in and through here. Now this mark here is the shoulder line, so that's this one. So if I do the same on that one now, link it to there and to there, bring this right down to here, and where that comes should be the shoulder line, so that hair is coming round here, and then the shoulder line is going to come down. Okay, we need to work out this area of the arm now. So to get those arms there, here's the top of the arm. I go to the joint here. There's the joint on the cross uh, reference. Here's the dot here. I bring the parallel rules across until they reach the outer one. And that's where that's going to come just there. And I can just draw that arm in there and we know it's going to come down from there. We need another line for that one, to the nose. Right, take that one to that corner, to there. Bring it out to the outside mark and it follows all the way down to here. And in her hand here she has this bit of fruit. So you can check where that bit of fruit is because that's that, that's that mark there. So that mark there is the one I'm after now. If I put that again on our scale here and I bring that down until that reaches there and then this one spot on look that's where it should be so everything's starting to work out now you've got a thumb all right anyway that's showing you how this can work um, all I've got to do now is just a few more points here and there we've got we just want to find where the, the hair comes around here down into there
this is all I should be needing for my painting a palette, a small round brush and a larger oval mop the FW acrylic inks lovely sets as you see here but these two in uh, turquoise and flame red and then my little set of pastels a landscape set in this case to do this portrait and some water and that should be all I need for this particular painting let's see shall we well because I don't have the uh, color pastels just for a couple of colors of this that I need in this particular range I'm going to show a bit of mixed media and we're going to do this red first and then I'm going to put a wash of blue right through here and build up a bit stronger around here of the turquoise and then I can work the existing colors I've got over the top and see if I can gradually bring this up and we're also going to do a bit of uh, we're going to use water with the pastel as well to build up these finer areas. I'll show you how that, that technique works. We'll start off with the, um, the red at first. I'm going to use my little round brush and just paint in the red where I want it on these on the watercolour paper. It's a nice strong colour. And I can cut it around it, remember. The beauty of very working like this is that we can work lights over darks and darks over lights. So nothing is in stone, if you like. I can change things as I go along. I just want to get these nice bright colours in there. Normally I would do this with the pastel afterwards. I'd, I'd do all my work and then I'd bring the bright pastels in later. In this case, no, I'm going to uh, just bring these colours in now and work over them. And there's one more spot. This area across her arm here is also a bright red. So I'm going to paint that in now. As I say, I could use a different makeup pastel, but just for fun, we're going to use different mixed media here. With the red acrylic ink, the FW acrylic inks. Let's make it a bit stronger in places. Just a bit, a bit more ink into it while I've got it on my brush. What a nice vibrance there. Also, it's painting over the pencil marks that are underneath because in this way of working there's a lot of marks left behind. I'll just use up the rest of my red ink to make sure it's lovely and bright. There we go. While we're waiting for it now I'll put up a second bit of board just to show you how the water can be used with pastel. For instance if I take some of the blue here and just put it across the paper sideways on now this is a, a knot paper so you can see the texture of it. In, in the case of the portrait we're using a, a, a um, hot press paper. If I take water now and go across that, look, we can use this just like watercolour paint. And I can leave some white cloud behind if I want like this. Give a sky. And the other thing is I can work into it. So I can come back with this and work into this to put more paint in. I can use the brush again, or I can even use my fingers to mould it about and get some lovely effects. You can see here, look. So I can use the paint, I can use the pastel first onto the paper and then blend it in, or I can put water on and put the pastel into the, the water to get these effects. And of course I can mix in there too, so if I want to come underneath with some greys, then I can come underneath. Now remember that the pastel is going to dry lighter. So it, it's, uh, it's quite dark at the moment, but when it actually dries off it's going to be lighter. And also, um, it's going to be fixed. So in other words, this will be able to take pastel over it very easily, and it won't move. Let's just go down below here for fun. We'll put a lighter colour in down below. What we're going to see is that we're able to put lights over darks this way. You can even blend it, look, with the, with the, with the water there. I can even blend that yellow in with the water and the blue above. Take some clean water and just paint that all the way through. Give distant hills here. And I'm going to come down with a slightly stronger green. Another band down here. Just blending it in there. I'm going to use some water again. And I can just take that up into here for fun little feeling of perspective to it will just come out and down like that in there. Just take a bit of that green to the clouds as well for fun. Just get a little bit of reflection of, of light going on. There we go. And down here a warmer green still. And what I want to show you now is how we can also use the wet pastel to our advantage with a brush. 
and show how we can blend things. Like come back up into there. Not only blend, but also how we can draw with the brush. So I can bring up through there with the brush now and start to do textures with the wet paint. Because it is virtually paint. It's only the pigment with gum arabic like watercolour, but slightly heavier and thicker. Right, we're going to let this dry off in a minute. I just want to put a little bit more um, colour into the background here, so I'll just put a few more, a feeling of a few more hills and trees and things back into here. Maybe just one or two things coming up through here in the foreground. And we'll make those a little bit warmer by mixing our colours together into the water. Like that. And I'm going to use my fingers again, while well, it's still wet, to paint it. Finger painting, here in places, perhaps down here we'll have a, have a feel going or something. I can tickle that up and in as well. So you can see the wet into wet effects we get there, just like watercolour. A few more greys going in my sky, so with that blue just through here. While it's wet now, I'm going to bring that blue just through there. And just give the feeling of brushes and reeds. And we can take one colour from one place to another, so I can take some of the blue from here and I can actually start painting with it as a palette into my other places. I could even take the pastel, take it off the pastel with the tip of my brush and paint in like that look. So off the pastel and paint straight in to the edge of my... So here we're using it just like we would poster paint or watercolour, but it's not as transparent of course just to give you an idea of how versatile pastel can be. People just don't realise. Go back, this is now dry. You see it's fairly well fixed. It will just smudge. I can start to put light over darks now. I can come back into here with my lighter colours. Start to work up lights into the sky a bit more. I can come across with these lights. And I can be stronger with it as well when I want to. So now I could use the pastel, as ordinary pastel, and put it on and start to blend it. But at any time I can come back with my brush and I can still blend. So at any time I can still work with water in this, these lovely effects we can get. Now, what I wanted to show you most of all was how we can also work the lights and darks and use a smaller brush for detail. At the moment I can get fairly good detail with this. For instance, if I want to put a, a tree in somewhere, let's put a dark tree in here somewhere. Very, very dark black. Because I can use the edge of the pastel to make something fine like that. But if I had a heavier pastel, I was having trouble doing these lighter areas. Let's just build a little tree here, shall we? And we'll reflect that down here for fun. We'll put a little bit of darks along here now as well. And we'll start reflecting those down. Just to show the techniques. Now if I take a small brush, put some water on it, and I pick up some of that pastel on my brush, I can paint with it, look. So I can make my branches like that. I'll just zoom in a little bit. You can see how I can actually take some water, mix it in with the pastel, and I can actually paint up with the pastel to get finer details, which I might have a job with the pastel with. And I'm going to do this shortly with the portrait where I'm going to actually show how we can paint the details of the face with a brush and pastel and then gradually work up the pastel normally. So again here I can paint in these thinner areas. I can even paint brushes and reeds coming up like this look. I can drag them up with the brush from here and drag them upwards right up and through reflecting down here. Yeah, You get the idea then. So brush and pastel and we can put the lights back on whenever we want. So if I now start to say, right, I want this tree to have leaves, let's start to put some leaves on here and around here. Now the paint is dry, I can treat it just the same as any ordinary pastel, and I can grow my, my layers of leaves onto here, get these effects, with water and with pastel. Right, that just gives you a quick idea, then needn't go any further with that. Um, Right, there we are then, a quick demonstration of how we can use a pastel with water, just in a quick makeup scene, just to show you how. Now 
I'm going to go back to the uh, portrait again, and I'm going to take my my turquoise uh, ink right the way around here. This beautiful turquoise ink. I could go over the whole thing, but I just want to glaze it round here for the minute. Quite strongly at first, especially on this area. And then I'm going to blend it out around the outside. So fairly quickly, let's get in a lovely dress down here. And up here we've got the same colour going on. And then I want to use clean water just to blend it down in a moment. So clean water on my brush and we'll come in right up to the edge of the hair here so that it just links in. This stuff dries fairly quickly and once it's dry you can't get an edge going again. So as you see here I've got to work pretty quickly to get that edge. You can still see underneath because although it can be quite op opaque if it's painted thickly while it's still thin, it's still transparent, we can see through it. And again, what I'm showing you, I'm not trying to make a great work of art, I'm simply showing you methods and techniques and fun ways of working. Now I want to use that thinly because I want that to come right through her hair here. I don't want it trickling over the red there. And I'm going to bring my colours across this. So all the way down around the hair. I want that blue with the red coming in there to it now. Won't matter because I'm going to blend it anyway. Quite thinly, bring that blue right down through the paper. That's going to give me a nice ground. Now I'm going to use a thin coat of that and come right across her face. So I've thinned it down transparently. You can just see her face glowing through there now. And that, when it's dry, is going to be ready for me to start working my pastel up. Right, we're going to work on the face and uh, neck first, and then into the hair. But of course the eyes are going to be very important. So first of all, I want to start trying to softly bring down these colours onto here. It's still a little bit damp, but it should be alright now. I'm going to need to look at golds and browns. Not easy because, again, I don't have the colours directly as I require them. Oh, great. Directly as I require them here. I'm going to have to blend them down through here and probably use the brush to get the colours I want at first in mixing them. So I can just gently tickle them over the surface and blend them into the paper, just letting the blue glow through slightly. And I can still see my drawing underneath then. back in with the brush when I want to do more detail on the eyes soon. At the moment it's just to get the base colours on. And of course this is far too warm a brown. It's just to find my way. so many ways we can paint a subject. 
And what we want to do is find the best medium and method for that subject, which has been the focus of at least one set of my DVDs. It's a lovely way to work and think about that we're not just creating a, a photograph or representation, we're going a stage further and we're enjoying the medium as well. to let this blue just glow through down here, gradually building up. Come in with a golden colour. And just gently feathering across the top scumbling and feathering, just dragging the pastel over the surface. Gradually building up these light, thin layers of tints. as I come round the outside, I'm just starting to form shapes now. Pastel works by the light reflecting off the little particles of the pigment. So we don't want to make things too dark and rub them too much or they'll just disappear and become dead and inert and not very nice. So I'm blending a bit then I'm going back over the top and putting fresh pastel on to bring them out again. Feeling the arch of the eyebrows here coming into the eyes. And I really do want to get the darks of these eyes in a minute, so I'm going to come back with the brush in just a minute and use the brush to draw these darks more carefully. indicating the hair coming down and through. We can cut back in whenever we want. I can come back and add a bit more light over the dark if it's gone a little bit much, you see. It's gently feeling. I usually use more colour than this. I don't normally use black in this way, but for this experiment, just to show you, gradually tinting in these colours. You can see they work very nicely. These puzzles so far have proved themselves with the water, haven't they? And they're blending on very nicely now as well. We've got to start finding some of the warmer colours amongst the hair now, shall here. Just adding our tints ever so lightly to get the reflected light. Now I'll take my small brush, I'm going to work into these darks a bit here and fix that black 
make it a bit tidier. I'm going to bring some white into it in a moment as well. And let's now start to draw the eye a bit. You can see what I'm doing with that brush now and how we can use the water with pastel as I was just advising. To get these wonderful effects. I can bring that down into much more detail. even start working on her eyelashes there with it. So water and pastel, a lot more versatile than you may have thought. And to her eyelashes there, look. Which we couldn't have done with the pastels on their own. It would be very, very difficult, wouldn't it? Finding these darks, and then once we've got them in, we can draw a little bit more with the brush. I can work on the mouth in more detail. Nice, delightful smile she's got. And then look at the light bits that are coming to start here with the pastel more carefully. And I'm going to show you how we're going to pick up paint from the um, pastel in a minute on the brush and use that directly onto the work. So ever so gently, just feeling the little bits of shadow. I want to reflect those little highlights. Now let's see if we can take, I could put the light in just with this look, I can take my pastel and very carefully try and just put the highlights into her eye just there, look, like that. Equally I should be able to take a little bit of the pastel on my brush Let's see if we can do that. And place that in too, look. So it, it will work. The softer the pastel, the better this is for this job. But pure pastel, certainly. Now if I'm mixing it up, I'm making a little paste there. And we know that this is going to dry lighter later. So just a little touch into there, look. And I can take my pastel off on the brush and put it into the eyes like that. I can use it elsewhere that same way, but it's very difficult to get a fine mark with the pastel, isn't it? Let's just show a little bit of a teeth smile in there. There we go. And you can see how she's starting to form now. Ever so just tickling the pastel almost by the weight of the pastel alone. Now, just here, there's this piece of jewellery in the middle of her forehead. Let's just put that in and I'm going to press quite hard, look, and look how that pastel goes on. Leaving some of the brown just showing through. Now to take some of my cream. I've only got a few colours here, so I'm having to do this with just these few colours. I'm going to put that cream in there, which shows against the white of the eyes. I think talking about the white of the eyes. I still need to work on this a little bit more here. I need to get that eye a little bit rounder. Up into there. So I'm going to have to touch that up a minute with the with the brush. Just to get that a bit more perfect. Back with my brush. Pick up some of the black. And we'll just tidy this eye up a bit. You see how neat we can be then with using the brush. So quite quickly we've established that now. I want to blend this back into the background. 
using that blue as well to blend back across here. And I'm going to let this blue blow right through. I'm going to scumble it down. This is this technique of scumbling using the side of the pastel. That's another thing I like about pastels that don't have the paper on them. I always have to remove paper from pastels. These and these SAA pastels don't have the, the paper on them. So I don't have to worry about that at all. Blend that in again. Go quite strongly into the hair here. some light in and around the back here. Again we're going to scumble, just let this light shine in, pick out the hair, just softly blending across the other. Now we need to work up this colour here. I'm going to use a deep brown now, a ready brown on this arm and this one here. And let the blue just glow through still. And darken down. When we put the, the colour in our hand, use it. Maybe you want to use it. Back down to where I was doing. A bit of the hand here. It gets much darker down here. Got to work all of these base colours up first. And our fingers come out at the end. One, two, and three, four. And we want the slight green of the apple in our hand. Let's just tint that in. Suddenly the thing starts to pull together and you can see what I'm trying to do, I hope. So it may have surprised you the amount of green that I'm now using just to work into this turquoise. It should help to pull it together as well. Now I've got to look at these gold areas here. That should be quite fun because I'm hoping all I've got to do is come in with this very light cream. So there's a box of I've only got 12 colours in this, so I have to be a little bit limited in what I, I do. In order to indicate this lovely gold braid work. And then as we come around the corner it gets a bit golder, so it goes slightly darker with it. Very delicately working up now. These final coats cools and warms. And again the, the neck mark can a little bit further than I've got it. It comes to here, it comes down to here, it comes down into there. And we're not far off what I wanted to achieve. Little touches at the end that we just need to finish things off. It's just to show you the technique and have a little bit of fun myself with this rather pretty composition and just to balance things out a bit we've only got a, a very dull red here but it might just work in the background a bit well there we are that shows you the technique doesn't that that's all we wanted to know so yes uh, SAA pastels very nice 
and you can see another use of them here now.